What up, players? It's Wallboss Tay up in this mud. Thank you for joining us to the uh, Legion 13 first video on how to paint an ultramarine. Today we did base coats and washes for this regular ultramarine legionnaire trooper. And so the colors you're going to need are as follows. McCrag blue. Where did my Abaddon Black go? Abaddon Black. Lead Belcher. And Balthazar Gold. Gehenna's Gold. Dawnstone. And for the shades, Drakenhof Nightshade. Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. So very basic colors for your Space Marine and um, yeah, just double checking here with this uh, diary that I made Boop. that uh, the grill for the Space Marines mask is going to be painted in, yeah, blue. So so I, I, I thought that his grill might be silver or, 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 or gold, but it looks like it's just, eh, some of these are silver, so you know what? Some of them are blue, some of them are silver, so I'm gonna go with this little addition to the end. I'm gonna paint a little bit of a lead belcher grill on him, so, oh man. My time-space continuum is all messed up. There you go. Oh, grew. So um, I'm gonna let that dry, then I'll come back over it with my crag blue as we build it up. Uh, no, he is not a Night Lords model. He is just uh, got my crag blue and some dark shading for his armor so stay tuned to see how I got him up to this stage and stay tuned for part two to see how I'm gonna bring the highlights up and make him into one of the proud sons of Guilimin that he is. Thanks for watching everybody and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Alright players let's get started we are going to begin with McCrag Blue. As always while I'm shaking this up and setting it onto my wet palette I built up my marine and I primered him or I primed him with duplicolor flat gray primer which I think is the best so McCrag blue is a nice it, it's it's an it's a nice foundation for for ultramarines obviously it's called McCrag blue and um, you want to be careful when thinning it down on your wet palette that it is uh, that that you don't paint it on too thickly. So we are going to cover just about all of this Space Marine's power armor with it, but you don't want to just slap the paint on, you want to use uh, constant short strokes of the paintbrush in order to place the paint down and then move it around. You also want to be able to turn it so that you get all the angles. It's really easy to miss an angle and then later on you come back or you're, you're trying to paint the next stage and you see, oh my goodness, totally missed it the inside of the knee pad or the underside of the gun or where his hands are. <clears throat> so project first founding the Ultramarines. There is not really much I can say about the 13th Legion of Space Marines that would do them justice just because of the amount of wealth of information and fiction and fluff that is out there. They are not a legion like the White Scars or the Iron Warriors that can easily be summed up because of the limited fiction that is out there. The Ultramarines are basically Games Workshop's 
a flagship. I mean, it's an ultramarine statue standing outside GW headquarters for crying out loud. They are the they are the guys that Games Workshop tries to sell their 40k experience on. At least at the moment. You never know. Someday in the future, the Ultramarines might be usurped by another chapter, but as it is, um, if you have gotten into the hobby at any point into 40k and have ever seen a Space Marine before, if you're even watching this video, then uh, chances are you have painted one of these, or tried to in the past, or you have at least a small force of ultramarines in your collection somewhere. They are the ultramarines, uh, ultramarines are the chapter that Games Workshop tries to promote. So yeah, like I said, they're, they're everywhere. Alright, McCrag Blue, that's going to take a little bit to dry, so while that does, why don't we paint the bolter? The colors you're going to need for your bolt gun, in the beginning at least, are Abaddon Black and Lead Belcher. Every time Every time I uh, get started on a model, I find mold lines and things that I missed. <laughs> when you assemble a model, you miss a lot of stuff. You don't really get to see where all the mold lines are, I think, until you prime it. So I'm going to start with Chaos Black, and this is, or Abaddon Black. And this is what I'm going to use to paint the casing of the bolt gun. The funny thing is that I've never painted an ultramarine before in my life. This is the first one I will have ever painted. I think that Games Workshop, a lot of people attribute this to Matt Ward and the previous codex he made, or he wrote, or he authored, where the, the 5th edition Codex of Space Marines, and let me know if I'm wrong because I'm going a lot by what I have heard other people say in my gaming in my gaming group, and your experience could be different, but a lot of people have said that in the fluff, at least, Matt Ward was just so in love with the Ultramarines that he kind of made them... I mean, which they are the, the chapter at this point that Games Workshop was trying to promote. All of the Space Marine kits have them on the cover. Um, I mean, what you know? What more can you do to, to promote these guys than have them be on the box kit of every single unit in your army and vehicle? That Belcher now, but uh, in the fluff itself, he wrote that everybody else, basically all the other Space Marines, are jealous of Ultramarines because. They all think the Ultramarines are so awesome, and they're sad they'll never be Ultramarines, and everyone aspires to be as awesome as the Ultramarines. And I, you know, in like the 90s, and if you're, you know, a teenager that is looking for the coolest army and you read that in a magazine, then I can see you saying, oh wow, Ultramarines must be awesome. This guy who wrote the book on them says that everybody else looks up to them, so that's the army for me. I'll take 10 boxes of everything, put it on my mom's credit card, and that's all fine and good. But when you are become more of an older experienced jaded gamer and you're looking more at the, at the uh, fluff and the things like that about the armies that you paint, it's, uh, it's kind of frustrating, you know, to think that, Lead Belcher again, to think that your legions proud troops would kind of be sitting in their barracks late at night or lying on their cots and losing sleep over the fact that they're never going to be ultramarines. Uh, I, I don't see any 
like Raven Guard or Imperial Fists especially, I don't see them thinking to themselves, oh shucks, if only I was an Ultramarine, then I'd be really awesome. The fact that they've been marketed as being the uh, be-all, end-all of what a Space Marine should be is kind of, basically what I'm saying, it's kind of ruined it in the eyes of a lot of older and jaded gamers. But, that's neither here nor there. If you love the Ultramarines, or if you have always thought about picking one up, or, or buying one, hey, they've got that new uh, buy, oops, buy an Ultramarines chapter deal on Games Workshop's website now. If you happen to have uh, $11,000 lying around or some, some something crazy like that, which I do not. Oh my gosh, can you imagine my lady boss if I told her one day, hey babe, so remember how Games Workshop is giving a, a whole chapter's worth of models? Yeah, I, I spent $11,000 or 12000 or whatever the crazy amount is for Whew. It would not be good times. We're gonna be painting the um, like the joints. No. Abaddon black. I also like to paint under under here, under what I call the butt flap. Your McCrag blue might still be drying, so if it is, then yeah, don't worry about it. These are actually the old Tactical Marine models. I know the new ones came out, uh, but I can't justify spending all that money on them. Looks like I have to wait for that one. Uh, so we'll let this dry in a little bit and. When we come back, we'll continue working with the with the Abaddon Black. Okay, continuing, I found a little bit more that needs to be painted in Abaddon Black, and that is the. So we're going for any of these these joint areas between the the plates of armor. Uh, you see some right here by the, where the leg meets the uh, center part here with the butt flap and in the elbow joints this is not really the elbow right what's that called right here in the wrist right here in the wrist Okay, so we're gonna let that dry for a second. We're gonna come back to the lead belcher. Oops. So yeah, I was trying to look up something to say for the Ultramarines because they are the most, in the fiction anyway, celebrated chapter of all the legions, but the interesting thing to me that I've been noticing is that people are reluctant to play Ultramarines because of the fact that they are too, I guess you could say, mainstream, right? and because of the fact that Games Workshop tries to force feed you. It's like when your parents try to force feed you vegetables you rail against that and you don't want to eat the vegetables. So a lot of people don't want to play Ultramarines because they don't like the fact that Games Workshop uses them to promote their game. And you see so much of them and you hear so much of them, you just kind of look around and are like, well, I don't know, what else is there? And people see the yellow of the Imperial Fists and they think, oh, that's cool, what are they about? Siegecraft, oh, that's pretty cool. What about these guys in the black over here with all the metal? What are they about? Uh, machines. 
and cybernetics. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Or what about these guys in the green? What's uh, what's their thing? Dragons, fire. Whoa, awesome. Um, people ask, whoa, what, what are the Ultramarines known for? Well, they're known for being generalists. They're really good at everything, but masters of nothing, really. So while every other Legion or Space Marine chapter now has has a strength. Like I said, the Imperial Fists are really good at siege craft, siege warfare, assaulting fortresses and stuff. The Raven Guard is really good at, at uh, subterfuge and that kind of thing. Iron Hands are implacable because they're like half robots. They don't care about people, but they're really cold-blooded, merciless. And um, the white scars are all about fast lightning strikes, hit and run with their motorcycles. Ultramarines are kind of good at everything. So they're kind of like the Mary Sue of Warhammer. It's a term I learned when I used to watch wrestling. They're like the generic good guys. A lot of people are like, ah, that's lame. I don't know if I want to play that. But, simple color scheme. All right, so while we continue, I'm gonna be using some Dawnstone next, if I can find that. Get your Dawnstone out, because we're going to use that to paint the highlight on the bolter case. brush and finding an angle that you can use to get the paint only onto the edge of the flat surface that you're working against. So this is why you don't want too much paint on the tip of your brush. Just kind of dragging it along the edge here. too much then you can lightly drag it across the top like I'm doing there that's a quick and easy thing to remember to do if you can hold it at an angle like this then you can get a little bit of paint on the edge of your brush and just play it along the edge like that So now that the black has had some time to dry, we're going to take our lead belcher and we are going to paint it uh, into the joints. Now usually I like to leave them black, but I, I've seen that in the uh, Games Workshop, all of the examples for Space Marines, when you do like the 360 degree view, you turn these Ultramarines around and all of them have silver their joints. So I guess it's like metal, metallic. Like the rest of their armor and not some kind of rubber. So there you go. Next we are going to paint on all the gold parts. So for this you're going to need Balthazar gold. I 
go rummaging through my box. Let me double check that it's not here in front of me. Ooh, there you go, Balthazar gold. Now the Ultramarines were known for um, their Primark, Robut Gulmin, to have created what is known as the Codex, Codex Astartes. The Codex Astartes is kind of like the, the be all end all book on not only warfare and everything it means to be a space marine, but also on breaking the breaking up of the legions after the Horus Heresy. The Horus Heresy was such a catastrophic time that uh, everybody was afraid that something like that might happen again. The Imperium, which was just recovering, uh, couldn't handle another blow like that, so ever the statesman and um, very wise person that he was, the Primarch wrote this treatise that broke down uh, it broke down all of the Space Marine Legions into chapters, creating what was called the Second Founding. So, a lot of legions, like the Imperial Fists, was broken up, or all the legions were broken up, unless they wanted to get a stern talking to. They were all broken up. And... Um, like, the Imperial Fists became Crimson Fists, the Black Templars, there was a section of each legion that retained the the creed, the teachings, the armor, colors, and everything of its founding, founding legion as it broke up into chapters, but um, there were all these new chapters that had to develop new, uh, new styles of war, new objectives. So you had like the Imperial Fists breaking up and there was that one chapter led by Sigismund who said, you know what, we're, we're not going to be a chapter like every other chapter. We're going to go out and we're going to just prosecute this eternal crusade against the enemies of the Imperium of Man, be they alien or chaos. Or witch and um, so when each legion broke up into chapters each chapter was tasked with breaking up further into uh, companies basically the, <laughs> the way I'm going with this is that each company if you follow the Codex Astartes, as the Primarch Rowboat Girly Man had advised, each chapter, Space Marine chapter, um, had to be told, had to have like individual standardized markings. Like that's where they've developed the, uh, the, the tactical squad, the devastator squad markings where you would have your, your chapter badge on one shoulder pad and your squad badge and identification on the other side. That way I guess they could tell each other apart. And uh, one way that they could tell their companies apart was that each, um, each Marine's shoulder, the rim of their shoulder pads would be painted a different color. So the most common color you see painted for the Ultramarines is gold because it looks the prettiest it stands out from the blue very nicely and um, and so that's why they they love to have it but if you look at the breakdown of the if you look into the fluff and the different colors that the that the shoulder pads reveal you'll see that they've got uh, different colors for different different companies each one uh, each company specif uh, specializes in in different things so you've got like a 
you've got your assault company and your devastator company stuff like that but there you go next thing we're going to do is i think that's all the gold we've got so we're going to shade because by now the blue should be dried we're going to shade with drakenhof nightshade this is just the blue we want to try and stick to the blue and leave everything else untouched Drakenhof is one of those one of those shades or washes that you really want to make sure that you shake it up well because the pigment is real thick and uh, or should I say heavy so if it separates from the oil or the water or whatever whatever that is that carries it around the model then it will very easily pool and dribble and run down and just cause this really ugly mess. So, don't want that. The best way to avoid that is to just shake the pot really hard. Ultramarines also, ironically, being the first chapter to get a full uh, treatment in the video game world. That's if you don't count the uh, super old Space Hulk video games or the um, Dawn of War RTS game. If you uh, if you notice that Space Marine, the video game, is the first game where you get to actually feel what it's like to step into the shoes of a space marine and chop things up with, with your chainsword, blow them up with the mass reactive bolter shells. Good times, good times for all. I remember playing that game and thinking like, wow, I really don't care about ultramarines, but I would love it if they made a game about these Imperial Guardsmen. Like you'd see them every um, every stage, just kind of hanging out in the back and being pathetic and shooting their little laser guns and going forward to die in droves. And I was like, I really want to play that game. I was, I actually was thinking that they would, in the video game, they they have all these experimental weaponry systems like these new guns that they're being developed. Like uh, they have this sniper bolter gun and um, I really honestly thought that they would have that in the new codex and uh, they didn't though. But I was like, wow, they're, they're doing it for the rule of cool for video games but I, I thought for sure that they were gonna carry it over into the tabletop. Oh well, it's probably better they didn't. They got gravity guns, and that is grav guns. That's its own can of worms. Yeah, so I am not a gamer. Uh, I don't really play the game Warhammer 40,000, but I love to paint, so it would be kind of sad if like the chapters that I didn't like painting the most became the most powerful because then if I ever wanted to get a space marine army because lord knows I have enough figures to do so and I want to paint up an effective force uh, I have to paint them in a color scheme that I don't like That's not true, you can always paint them as successor chapters as well. So say you did not like playing Ultramarines, but you really liked their rules, their special rules and chapter tactics and stuff, you could paint them up as Nova Marines or any of the many, many, many 
uh, successor chapters that the Ultramarines have. The Ultramarines became one of the reasons why they're so uh, used throughout the fluff and the fiction is because after the the Horus Heresy, they were one of the least damaged legions. And so when it came time to make subsequent foundings, at least this is what I, I've, I think is true. <laughs> they had so much <coughs> Ooh, bless me, uncorrupted gene seed that they were able to have all these different foundings while all of the other um, Space Marine chapters at this point were recovering and trying to, just trying to, you know, hold on. Okay, so shades always traditionally take a long time to dry. So what we'll do is we'll shade the gold sections and then we'll call it a day for this this video and we'll start again when the shades have all dried. Uh, for the gold, for the gold, to shade the gold, we are going to be using, let me just double check that I've got it correct here. Uh, before we even shade, we are going to highlight with Gehenna's gold. So get your Gehenna's gold out, and Gehenna's gold is like the new shining gold, if you remember the old shining gold. Beautiful color, nice and yellow and bright, whereas Akrax gold is more of a bronze or brass. Gehenna's gold is like a little bit closer to that original bright yellow treasure, our treasure kind of gold color. Especially with all the new books that Black Library is making, on the Horus Heresy. Uh, the Ultramarines were, like I said, they had a hard time kind of breaking out of the shadow of them being the kind of, you know, douchiest legion during the Heresy, but now there's a lot that's coming out that's making them seem more awesome. They were very strongly based when Games Workshop was first developing them. At least from what I know, Blue Trilobite, you can probably correct me on this, but a lot of their appeal came from that, this kind of Greek-Roman theme. And they have names like Maximus and uh, very, like, Spartans, like the Spartans kind of theme to them. Uh, so, yeah, that's that was kind of like their thing, and then as more and more fluff and fiction came out, I guess the authors were like, we need, a, we need to highlight the courage and honor of the Ultramarines and just not them seem like a bunch of, of baby faces. So, um, okay, so that's what they did. So um, while we're waiting for the Gehenna's gold that we just painted to dry off. We're gonna take some gnome oil and we're going to paint the silver pieces. Take the bolter, the, uh, the bits of armor on the grill. I mean, not the grill, but the. Oh, yeah, we gotta paint the grill. Y'all barbecuing? No, Lewis. I love barbecuing. What happened to your voice? Ah. Um, <laughs> where was I? There we go. Hey, so just get that non oil shade into those creases, and that will very nicely shade that all that lead belcher that you painted up. All right, 
second last shade we're gonna do at this point is Agrax Earth Shade, I believe. Let me double check. Yep, Agrax Earth Shade for the um, for the gold. Oh, Agrax Earth Shade is another one. You gotta shake it up. So because it's brown, the Agrax Earth Shade will give a nice deep brown tone to your gold. And make sure that you get just a little bit of it into the creases where it meets the blue armor in the shoulder pad. You want to give just a little bit of a shadow line. And what that's going to do is give you a very nice bit of depth to paint against. And oh, forgot. Right there. Okay, so I'm going to pause here, let the rest of that dry. Armor's looking really dark. <gasps> Night Lords? Nope. We are going to just let that Drakenhof Nightshade dry a little bit more and then we're going to start painting him back up. Thanks for watching.